check out this super dramatic lighting that I've set up today. It's not super dramatic, but I have set up a nice little triangle here. That's about it. You're getting a weird angle. I'm kind of like looking up. I don't know. I'm, I was looking for some of my gear and my gear situation is a mess. Basically have been throwing everything into a borrowed carry-on wheelie suitcase thing that was really supposed to be used one time and given back to a friend who lives in Michigan. But it's basically become my adopted lighting gear case. So thank you, Missy and Aaron, for um, the unintentional donation. I really do need to find a better way to store and to travel with my camera and lighting equipment, which traveled a lot this weekend um, because I was in Vegas for those shoots I was talking about. I had a lot of takeaways from this, this shoot on Sunday. Uh, which lasted basically from like 9 15 in the morning until about 10 30 at night all the principal stuff that involved the rest of the crew and the cast uh ran until about 6 p.m 6 30 p.m but then i had a bunch of b-roll that i shot by myself uh, around las vegas uh, you know until like i said 10 30 at night everything actually went pretty well uh because it did a lot of planning so i had a very well mapped out schedule. It feels like I stay in really good communication with everyone involved. Everyone showed up on time, rested and ready to do whatever. We, yeah, we stayed right on schedule the whole day. We felt maybe a little bit behind, but only at the parts that really just involved like two to three of us. So it wasn't that bad. All the planning in the world, and <laughs> including like mapping out shot lists and schedules and everything, uh, doesn't do you any good if you don't look at it and check things off while you're going. Uh, there was a couple of shots I, that we didn't get, you know, not having an actual like production manager or production coordinator on hand to go through and check off everything and make sure we hit everything. That kind of hurt. The other thing is trying to do too many things at once. I realized that I can't be directing and shooting and making sure that everything's working all at the same time. And I know this kind of overlaps, it goes back to the production coordinator thing. I had a lot of checklists for equipment and shot lists and all that, but not like the, ver the very tiny nuances, right? So if you had like a cinematographer, they would make sure that all the lighting was right. And then your, they might be the camera operator, but even if they weren't, a separate camera operator would be like, okay, are all the camera settings right? I synced up with the second camera. I was like, okay, we're both shooting 24 frames a second. Cool. We're both shooting ABC HD. Okay, cool. But then there was one additional setting I just didn't check. Then when we start recording the beginning of this interview, I wasn't recording. So I found on the card after we shot uh, this clip that was like 10 minutes of me just carrying the camera around the venue and it's just sitting on the bar. And while it provided some interesting behind the scenes, um, it also meant that when I went to hit the button to record, when we started to actually record, I was actually turning it off instead of on. So I did hit the button, but it was toggled to the wrong thing. Just the really small things that like, if I would have taken a second to sit back and if I could have been watching all that stuff from like outside of myself, I would have seen it. Robert Rodriguez wrote a book about his first film, El Mariachi, and uh, how he made it basically without a crew. The book was called Rebel Without a Crew. The story is fascinating, but I'm still just baffled because I couldn't get through this one day of shooting this little tiny thing. Couldn't get through a simple thing like that without having more assistance. I don't know how, how he supposedly got through shooting this entire feature, this action film, with no crew. Basically, he used the actors as the crew. I mean, when he says he shot without a crew, it's not entirely true, but it still stands. It was him and a camera and the actors and kind of everyone pitching in. So that's how you get by without a crew, right? There are so many things that if I could have done them differently, I would have. But I think everything turned out okay overall. We, we had to change some plans with shooting because the weather went wacky. So Sunday morning, it was hot and sunny. And then we shot outside Sunday afternoon my light totally went out in the middle of this, of course. So then we also shot outside Sunday afternoon. It was also hot and sunny. But then we moved to another location to shoot a scene that was actually going to be happening sequentially before the earlier scenes. And the clouds started to come in. And it's monsoon season in Vegas and the weather can be unpredictable. I didn't think it was that big of a thing because, again, the weather can change. So I was like, okay, we'll have cloud cover. At least we'll have even light for these outdoor scenes. 
I go and I get the action cam set up inside and I get the audio set up and I tuck myself in the back of the car behind a couple of uh, sunscreens so that you don't see me <laughs> running the audio and directing from the back of the car. We're all ready to go and then raindrops start coming down. And we're like, we'll, we'll just get through it, we'll get through it. It's fine, we're, we're facing inside, it's fine. But it starts to pour, like pour, pour. And all you can hear on the audio is just the hammering of the, of the water droplets on the windshield. Suffice to say, we're probably gonna have to scrap that portion. Aside from that, everything I think went pretty well. Anyway, I have a lot of editing to do. I'm sure it'll all turn out fine in the end. Probably not exactly the way I envisioned because, well, things just didn't go exactly as planned. I think there's plenty of good stuff to work with and hopefully my partner on this project is happy with the way it turns out. And uh, hopefully you guys will like it when it's all done. So I'm still pretty exhausted from the whole thing um, because it was basically driving into Vegas on Saturday morning, going directly to take care of some comic book business actually, and then straight to a haircut. Thanks Globe Salon. And then straight to an interview. So then getting some last minute gear, which I ended up not needing, but I'm sure I could use in the future. And then dinner with friends. And then up until probably midnight or 1 a.m. working on production documents. Saturday night, I locked myself out <laughs> of my friend's house who I was staying with. And I didn't have my phone or my wallet or anything like that. So that was an adventure. Fun fact, kids, pay phones? don't really exist anymore. So I guess always have your cell phone with you and always have it charged. So yeah, I'm still recovering because it was just smash, smash, smash days and straight to the office on Monday and driving home another four hours on Monday night. So uh, it's Thursday that I'm recording this and I'm still playing catch up and it's gonna be a busy weekend going out because I'll be flying to Denver on Saturday to celebrate my birthday and then we'll be going uh, to Vail, Colorado on Sunday for a conference that starts Monday morning. I gotta go, I gotta eat something. It's dinner time. I don't know if I'm really gonna make anything. Maybe I'll have an apple. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's what they say. Hey, hey.